Hi everyone, I'm Aaron Rump, and today what we're going to do is we're going to go over setting up the OP2 on our Instructables number 4 part, the one that has the surface milling. So if you look in here, the part that we're talking about is the part that we did all our surface milling on. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find the X, Y, and Z zero for the second operation. Now, X, Y, zero was the center of the part when it was in the raw form. So that was easy. We were able to put our jaw, our part in the jaws. We were able to edge find and edge find and come over half the, half the distance of the part. But now I have to edge find this surface and that surface, but I can't do that because I have this raw material in the way. So the way we're gonna do this setup is I'm going to end up being flush with this surface and I'm biased up against this surface. So I'm going to edge find the side and the front of my jaws and I'm going to call this corner right here X, Y, zero. So I want to do that first. So I'm going to call it my edge finder that I actually already have in the spindle and we're going to turn it on and then we're going to go ahead and find that corner. So I'm going to go into MDI and if I'm not on this screen I can hit program and hit program again make sure I'm on there I'm going to go S1200 M3 in the block insert and hit cycle start and then I'm going to go into handle mode and I can't open my door on this machine with the spindle turning so I'm going to get close to where I want to be and I'm going to go into my position mode because I want to know what's happening so I'm gonna come over and we're gonna do the front so of the jaw first. We're gonna do our Y axis. So I come down, I come over, I'm gonna reduce my increments. And once my edge finder breaks over, I'm gonna come back and do it again. So it has broken over. I'm gonna come up. Now we're gonna do machinist shifts on this part. Meaning our edge finder broke over, we know where we're at. So I'm gonna go into offsets my program uses G54, so I want to look at my program, and if you'll see here, it says XY0 is the center of the part. We're going to use hard jaws, one inch tall parallels, and we're going to set our Z. So, knowing where all this is at, I'm going to set Y0 right there. So I'm going to hit Y0, measure. That's going to input that variable right there. And now I'm going to shift half the diameter of my edge finder, which in this case is 100 thousandths. So I'm going to type in 100 thousandths. I'm going to hit plus input because we're going in the positive direction. It's going to ask me if I'm sure I'm going to hit execute. If I don't hit execute, it will not change. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same thing in our X. We're going to come over and we're going to find the side of our jaw. So I'm getting really close. My increments have been reduced. And I come over until it breaks over. And once I see it break over, I come off and I go slower until I see it break over again. Once it breaks over, I'm going to come up and then I'm going to go back to my offsets. I'm going to hit X zero measure. Now I know I'm to the right of the jaws, so my shift will have to be in the negative direction. So negative 100 thousandths, I'm going to hit plus input. And then I'm going to hit execute. So right now, I know that the corner of my jaw is X, Y, zero. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our print right here. And this is the part that we have. So if I look right here, you see I have two inches, 953 thousandths, and it's the same right here. So I have to take that number and divide it by two. Or in this case, I could also take my micrometers and measure my part and make sure that it is, and then divide that by two. So that way we're as accurate as possible. So in this case, I've taken that number and divided it by two. It's gonna be one inch, 476 thousandths. So, I'm gonna go minus that amount because we're moving in the X negative direction. So I'm gonna go negative one inch, 476 
thousands, and I'm gonna hit plus input. When I hit plus input, I can see that it did move in the right direction. And so I'm gonna do the same thing with my Y. It too will be a negative direction shift. And it will be the same amount because our part is square. So I'm gonna go minus one inch, 476 thousandths, and I'm gonna hit plus input, execute. Okay, so now we set our X and our Y, but I can't load my part in yet and set the Z because I have to load it on top of the parallels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my door. I'm gonna take my one inch parallels, make sure everything's nice and clean before I put it in there, make sure my parallels are clean. And then I'm gonna load my part on top of the parallels. So in this example, what we're gonna do is I'm actually going to remove my edge finder and we're gonna use a dial test indicator. So a dial test indicator is very accurate for what we need to be doing. And I'm gonna put this on the 15 or the zero, whichever one you're comfortable with. And then whenever I go to touch my one, two, three block, cause that's where all my tools were set to, I'm gonna come about half the rotation of it to the 15. And then I'll show you where we're gonna go from there. So all I'm gonna do is instead of using an end mill, and setting the distance from the one, two, three block to the top of the one, two, the top of the parallel, we're gonna use a dial test indicator. So let's put that in. So this is just hand tight. And I wanna make sure that I get it in there correctly. And you can see that I am on the zero and I'm gonna put my one, two, three block into the machine. So with my one, two, three block in the machine, all my tools were set to this one, two, three block. So I need to come down and touch it just like I would if I was setting a tool. So I wanna make sure I'm not in the hole. Come down and you'll actually see my indicator go to the 15. So right there is pretty good. So I'm on the 15. I'm gonna go position, Z, origin, because I wanna know what that location is. Now this is very common for setting zeros, okay? So I'm gonna come up, and here's why I'm using my test indicator. Now, I'm gonna to touch off the top of my one, two, three block and get that distance. So I'm gonna rotate my dial test indicator And then I'm gonna come up and touch the top of my one, two, three block. Now be careful not to bump it or else you just have to start over. So you won't be able to see my dial, but I'm gonna go down to the same distance, half a rotation to the 15. So I have half a rotation to the 15. And if I look at my screen, you'll see that my relative says it's 877 thousandths. This number has to go into my work offset because it is the distance from the one, two, three block to the top of that parallel. Now on other machines where there is a calculated distance from the tooling position to the gauge line, you would have to use an end mill and then you would have to do what we're doing there, but the bottom of your end mill would have to touch the top of the one, two, three, or the parallel. So different way to do it, but both ways are accurate. Now that I know this distance, remember my program says that I need to be one inch, 750 thousandths up from the parallel. So what I'm gonna do is I know how far I am from my one, two, three block to my parallel. So I'm simply going to add one inch, 750 thousandths plus input and hit execute. Now, if you'll notice, my op one and op two distances are pretty similar, right? They're actually really close, okay? That will not always be the case. So making sure that we set it up the way the instructions say will guarantee us to be right. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and load my part into location so you can see how this worked. So I'll remove my dial test indicator. Now if you'll notice, when I go to load this, I'm gonna put my one, two, three block against, not device back vice, but 
on the actual jaw that I edge found off of. And not too high, or else I'll be touching the raw material. So when I lay it on the parallels, I push back and then I slide it up against the one, two, three block. And then I hold it in position and then I tighten it. So, doing that, I'm nice and flush right there. The next thing I want to do is I want to verify and see that it is in the right location. I want to give myself a visual, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up a tool and I'm going to go to a location. So, on my sheet here, it shows me to check my offsets. I can type in these numbers. Of course, it's going to be G55 because we're using G55 in our program. XY0 should go to the center of our part. And now right here, the G43 and the H call up, it says three inches. I still want to see if I'm three inches above the parallel, not the part, but I'm going to have to type it in a little bit differently. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So we're going to go to MDI and I want to call up a tool that I've already set. So on my first operation, I had a center drill that I set. So I'm going to call up tool 11 M6 in the block insert. And when we do that code, it should put the tip of my center drill in the right location. And then we'll be able to move over to see if it is three inches above the parallel. So let's go into MDI. We're still there. We're going to type in GO, G90 for absolute, rapid mode, G55, our work offset, X0, Y0, in the block insert. Now I'm going to type in G43, H11, because my T and my H have to match. And I'm going to type in Z, one inch, 250 thousandths. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because I am one inch, 750 thousandths above my parallel. So to be three inches above the parallel, I'm going to type in one inch, 250 thousandths, which equals three inches. So in the block, insert, and now we're going to hit cycle start. And it's coming down, it looks right. I'm going to open up my door. And when I look in here, I'm just looking to see that the tip of the center drill is close to where the center of the part is. Now I can uh, put layout lines on my line and then bring the tip of the, the center drill down to see how close it is. That's one way to check it. Or I could scribe a line with my calipers or I can just simply eyeball it and know that I've done my setup right. Multiple ways to do it is how fast you want to do your setup. Okay, so I can see right now that I am really close to the center of my part in X and in Y. So, next thing I want to do is I want to put my parallel right there. So if I put my parallel right here, I'm going to handle over and see if I am three inches above the parallel. So I'm going to handle over. I'm not going to move in Z. I don't want to move in Z. I want to stay right where I'm at. And then I'm going to put this right there. I can come over and see that I am right where I need to be. I go right underneath it and I'm exactly three inches above where I want to be. So if I wanted to, I could check that with the part out of the machine, but it's up to you on how you want to do it. So with that said, I have my X and my Y and my Z set up. Now there's one last thing I have to check in my program. I have to look at this tool. My tool description says it's a one inch end mill. So I've got that in there, but this program uses cutter radius compensation and the column needs to be set to zero. So if I go to offsets, go to tool offsets, I'm using tool two, even though in my program, it does say tool one. Remember if it's in parentheses, it doesn't matter. If I come down to what's actually being called up, it is tool two and H2. So make sure you keep in mind what's in the program is what it reads, what's in parentheses is for the operator only. But more often than not, you do want them to match. So again, tool two H2, if I come down further, 
I have a D2. So if I go offsets, G42 looks at this page, D2, I have it as a zero. If you had it as a one inch, it would not cut anything. It would actually stay off the part by quite a bit. If I had it as a minus value, there's a chance that it's going to undercut my part. So I'm gonna put that at a zero. And now that I've checked my tool links, my columns, I've checked to see if everything's in the right location. Let's run this part and see if this worked. Well, it looks like everything came out really good. Uh, again, my name's Aaron Runk. Thank you for watching and I hope this helps.